Thank you very much, and thank you, Robert, for that kind introduction. Very grateful to, uh, to be among so many people who share Robert's motto that the world will benefit when economy supports well-being. I spent most of my career in healthcare, and I can't think of a sector of the economy, the global economy, where the triple bottom line concept is, is more important. It's hard to find a better example of the consequences of failing to adhere to that concept than in the U.S. healthcare system and the health insurance component of that system in particular. To say that the United States actually has a healthcare system actually is a bit of a stretch. Uh, unlike most other developed countries that took deliberate actions to create the systems they have today, in the United States, our system just developed uh, more or less on its own. As I was thinking of the timing of our, uh, our time together just a few days after Halloween, I remembered the, uh, the words that came to Dr. Frankenstein when he got the first look at his creation. He said, I beheld the wretch and the monster whom I had created. Today we can look at the United States healthcare system in much the same way. A monster, dangerous, out of control, a creation of our own making. And like Dr. Frankenstein's monster, our monster is a product of our good intentions. Yet it has the very real potential, very real potential to do great harm. I won't go into a lot of detail this morning about the beginnings of the health insurance industry in the United States, except to say that at its genesis, it looked very much diff very different from what it looks like today. In fact, our original system of insurance was a much more socialistic approach to covering Americans than what we have now. What went wrong? What happened? Well, in a word, greed happened. For-profit companies and their Wall Street investors realized they could make a lot of money by getting involved in health care, and health insurance in particular. Today, in the United States, nonprofit insurance plans are endangered species. There are three things I think you need to know to understand why the insurance industry in the United States has such a tight grip on our health care system. There are conversion, consolidation, and concentration. The first C is conversion. Over the last 20 years, roughly the time that I spent in the health insurance industry, many of the insurance companies that had been nonprofits converted to for profit status. The second C is consolidation. Since the early 1990s, we've seen a remarkable series of mergers and acquisitions to the point that today the insurance industry in the U.S. is dominated by seven very large for profit insurance companies. And I worked for two of them in my career. I call these seven companies a cartel because they've become so big and so dominant. One out of every three Americans with health care coverage today is enrolled in a plan owned and managed by one of those seven giant companies. The third C is concentration. In every market in the U.S., one, two, or at most three big companies dominate, which means, for the most part, that Americans really have only the illusion of choice. I think many of us, uh, uh, when we climb the corporate ladder, we, uh, we, we don't see how much of the rest of the world lives. But I can see that the U.S. healthcare system over the last couple of years not only was failing millions of Americans, uh, but it also, my industry's all, the business model of my industry was one that was also not sustainable. In retrospect, I'm really ashamed that I let myself get caught up in deceitful and dishonest public relations and public affairs campaigns that worked so hard that hundreds of thousands of Americans have died and millions of others have lost their homes and been forced into bankruptcy so that a very few corporate executives and investors could become very rich. An estimated 45,000 Americans die every year, one every 12 minutes, because they're uninsured. But it was only during the last few years of my career that I came to realize the full scope of the harm that my colleagues and I had caused and the links that insurance companies will go to to increase their profits at the expense of working families. As I told the U.S. Senate in June, the higher up the corporate ladder I climbed, the more I could see how insurance companies confuse their customers and dump the sick all so they can satisfy their masters on Wall Street. 
I described how insurance companies make promises they have no intention of keeping, how they flout regulations designed to protect consumers, and how they make it nearly impossible to understand or even to obtain information that consumers need. I also told the senators how the industry has conducted duplicitous and well-financed public relations and lobbying campaigns every time Congress has tried to reform the U.S. healthcare system, and how the current behind-the-scenes efforts of the health insurance industry may well shape reform in a way that benefits investors far more than average Americans. One of the reasons I left my job at Signal Corporation, where I headed corporate communications, was because I did not want to be involved in yet another PR and lobbying campaign to kill or gut health care reform. I finally came to question the ethics of what I had done and been a part of for nearly two decades. The health insurance industry goes to great lengths to keep its involvement in these campaigns hidden from public view, but I know that industry leaders are always full partners in developing strategies to derail any reform that might interfere with their ability to increase their company's profits. I also know that the insurance industry is up to the same dirty tricks, using the same devious PR practices that is used for many years to kill reform again this year, or even better, to shape reform so that it benefits insurance companies and their Wall Street investors far more than average Americans. So that's why I left the job that paid me really quite well. I could not, in good conscience, continue positioning my employer and my industry as part of, the, part of the solution to the seemingly intractable problems of the U.S. healthcare system. I could not, in good conscience, continue to do whatever it took, regardless of the ethical, of ethical considerations and consequences, to, set, to satisfy the relentless profit expectations of Wall Street. So I decided, long last, to grow a pair. To take, uh, uh, to take on a rich and powerful industry because it was the right thing to do. I'll end my remarks with a, a call to action to all of us here this morning. If we are truly committed to making the world a better place, we must leave this conference as evangelists for an economy based on the triple bottom line concept and be willing to take bold and often uncomfortable actions to help achieve and a like that. Thank you.